Well, today I'd like to discuss your power transformer. Unless it's uh, All American 5, it's going to use a power transformer of some sort. Now, on your real old radios, they were designed to run on 110 to maybe 115 volts. Your real old ones, like your 1930s, thereabouts. I'm no expert. This is a hobby for me. I've learned a lot from a lot of my good friends on antique radio forums. And I've been a member for quite a while, and I've asked more questions than I've answered. But I enjoy the hobby. But I'm going to share some of what I have learned and what I've learned throughout the years pertaining to power transformers. One thing you have to do in order to check your transformer, you say, well, the transformer is running very hot. That's a common problem that people do have. And uh, they don't realize one thing. And that is your line voltage nowadays is about 125. Some even as high as 127 volts. These old radios of the 1930s, for instance, are, and even the 1920s are designed to run on 110 volts. Sometimes 115. So you want to check and make sure, you know, get the specs out, get the book out, the schematic or whatever, and look it up. And it'll tell you what the input voltage is. If the transformer needs 110 volts, don't put 125 in it. Use what they call a back boost transformer. You can get one like at Radio Shack. And uh, you just hook it in and you'll feed the 12 volt winding in series with the primary winding in an out of phase mode so that you reduce the input voltage by 12 volts. The transformer's running hot. The first thing you've got to do is take all loads off the transformer. Everything Pretty off the transformer. Your secondaries filament winding short. What is very common is your primary windings and mostly your secondary high voltage windings will short. Uh, either a turn or two which could cause it to run warm or short to the case. In a little while I will show you by way of ohm meter here how to check it out. This transformer came out of a piece of equipment that I had. It's 350 volts if I remember correctly from the center tap to each leg of the high voltage winding so it's 700 across alright I've checked this out and there is no shorts in this one now you want to remove all loads and you pull out the rectifier so your rectifier filament is disconnected but most importantly the high voltage windings which in this case is the two red wires and I'll show you that when we get a little closer here with the camera. Make sure that these are disconnected. Now, if it's you got other components on that socket, you know, and you're going to probably have filters going to it. So the best thing to do is to remove the high voltage windings completely off the rectifier circuit. Take it right and disconnect it so that you just got the two wires sticking up. So what you want to do right. is to disconnect. It's I know it's a pain, but you know disconnect all wires so that your transformer is basically running with nothing on it. Okay, but you've got to start out with a cool transformer. So if it's already hot, let it cool down for several hours so that you can judge it properly. Put it on the bench. Put put 110 volts or 120, 115 rather, whatever it calls for. If it calls for 120, 20 volts, then put that in. Put whatever the rating is on it and leave it sit for uh, I would say half an hour it should be lukewarm or cold with no loads it should be lukewarm or cold if it's warm or hot real warm or hot you've got a shorted winding on the transformer no doubt about it you have a shorted turn in there or more now I'm going to show you with an ohm meter how to check your transformer 
for shorts to the case, which probably most of you guys know out there anyways. But this we'll particular go through it. transformer came out of an old, cheap electronic organ I picked up at a yard sale. It's been sitting in my screen house at my, 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 my home. And um, it was in the dampness. So it had some dampness problems in here. This has been sitting up in the shop now for about two years. Should be dried out. It wasn't really soaked. It was just in a damp environment, but it was not no, it wasn't rain down or anything. Okay, this is your, uh, as you well know, this is your uh, input. This is your 100, and, uh, in this case, it's 115 volts. This is your filament, which is a heavier, uh, the green wire here. This is your center tap for your filament. This is your center tap for your, let me get this away so you don't see these other wires and get confused, I don't know. The videos on YouTube are not very good by the time they get converted to MPEG-4. They're very hard to see. There's nothing much I can do about that. Um, this is your center tap for your secondary uh, high voltage and of course your uh, outside of the windings. Okay. When you measure your voltage your voltage should be equal from the center tap to each leg of these. So in this case, I, if I believe it's 350, maybe 325 from center to each leg. Total of 700 across. First we're going to check with the ohm meter. Now I've got my HP 410C here. You've seen me use uh, this before. You take your uh, common lead of the ohm meter and you put it on the case. In this case I'm going to put it down on the screw here because this has got paint on it here. I want to make sure we make a good contact here. So I'm going to put it down on the screw of the case. The ohms are 7 times 10 meg. Okay. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take the ohm meter. I'm touching this with my finger. This is how sensitive this is okay because we're on the highest ohm scale so this is making the needle move just by me touching it not even touching the coal leg if I touch this put my finger on here you'll get uh, even uh, you see you get resistance to my body okay so that's how sensitive the ohm meter is now needles to say you do not have this power transformer energized when you're doing this unless you want to lose your ohm meter put it on here Doesn't matter, you can put it on any leg really, and look at the ohms. She's sitting on infinity. Alright, it doesn't matter, you can take it and bring it over here. It's still going to be on infinity unless the winding's open. In which case it could still be on infinity and it would give you a false reading. But now, okay, I'm going to show you something. Now, to show you that I am connected to the windings, I'm just going to touch this other uh, center leg here. And watch the needle. All right, see, that's just from my hand. All right, so there's no short to the case, okay? If I was to touch this and my case and this, there's your meter reading right there. See it? Now how well you can see that. Okay, so there is no shorts in the high voltage to the case, okay? According to your own meter. Do you still want to run a high voltage check on this with, with this thing energized? Now we're going to go to the filament. The ground is still on here. The common is still connected to the, to, to the case. We're going to the filament. Now it doesn't matter what side of the filament you use. And we're still running infinity. Now we're going to take it and go to one side of the primary. All right, one side of the primary, still on infinity. Okay, so this is the primary. We're checking shorts from the primary to the case. If there was a short between primary and the case, well, you could isolate the transformer from the chassis, but that's a very dangerous situation to do that. It's a hazard, but nobody reaches in there to change a tube with that thing plugged in, you're going to go flying across the room. But we have no shorts in this transformer to winding to case. But that does not eliminate the fact that we still could have a winding short, a shorted turn or two, in either the 
secondary or the primary.